Hello everyone, I am Dr. Fayaz Mehman from Mumbai. I am going to speak on arthroscopic repair of bucket handle meniscal tear. As we are aware, bucket handle tear comprises of 10% of total meniscal tears, medial being 3 times more often found than lateral. A bucket handle tear of a meniscus becomes painful when it flips, thereby giving the MRI picture of a double PCL sign. I am presenting you with a 19 year old male who had locked knee post twist injury. There was an isolated medial meniscal bucket handle tear without any ligament injuries. I prefer operating the patient in supine position using a leg holder or a lateral thigh support. I follow the following steps while repairing the bucket handle tear tear reduction, opening of the joint space by means of pie crusting if required, opposing the tear edges, first putting an inside out traction suture to reduce the meniscus, repair the posterior horn, then the anterior horn and the body, check the stability of repair and address any malalignment or instability issues. I prefer repairing posterior horn with all inside technique, body with inside out technique and anterior horn outside in technique. However, all inside technique can be used in all the areas of meniscus. This is how a flipped bucket handle tear looks like. Try and reduce the meniscal tear with a blunt instrument like a probe, else you can damage it. Manipulate the joint if required so as to get a good reduction as you can see here. Once done, open the joint space if required by means of pie crusting. Put in a traction suture in an inside out manner using inside out needles and the cannula for it. Note that I have flipped the viewing portal so that I can utilize the other portal for the needles using its trajectory. Do not go posterior to the body while taking inside out sutures otherwise you might land up inadvertently damaging the posterior medial structures. Once the traction suture is applied in its right place the meniscus stabilizes and one can proceed towards fixation of the posterior horn. Once the meniscus is stabilized, pass the slider of the all inside device, if required bend it 20 degrees and then pass all inside device over the slider and remove the slider. Then deploy the first implant through both the flaps of the tear. See to it that you go adequate depth so that the deployment of the first implant is in its proper place and it is not a failure. Come out and keep adequate distance between the two punctures so that you do not cause iatrogenic tear in the meniscus. Repeat the same step again. deploy another implant and remove the device. Now you will have one thread coming out of the portal and two threads between the two implants which are going to reduce the torn meniscus. See to it that you keep the probe in between the loops while pulling out the suture else the suture will cut the meniscus like a cheesecake. Once the stability of the repair is confirmed, cut the thread. This is how the all inside device fixes the meniscal tear. Do not hesitate to change the portal to get the right trajectory of the needle of the all inside device and repeat the steps to repair the posterior horn of the meniscus using two, three 
और फोर ऑल इन साइड स्यूचर्स यू कैन यूज द टिप ऑफ द नीडल फॉर जॉय स्टिकिंग एंड रिड्यूसिंग द मेनिस्कल टेयर same steps have been repeated here for the reduction do not over tighten nor keep it too loose you can see a stable posterior horn now now for the anterior horn i use an outside in repair like this using two needle technique with a wire and the loop pierce the needle from outside to inside through the peripheral part through the tear and through the medial part of the torn meniscus then pass another needle thereby having two needles as you can see now pass the loop from one of the needles and the thread from another needle let the thread pass through the loop you can use a grabber if required keep holding the thread pull the loop while holding the thread and retrieve the suture through the loop outside once this loop is fixed in its proper position it can be tied outside the capsule thereby reducing the tear now pass another set of two needles and repeat the steps while tying the knot outside the capsule be careful that no other structure is trapped between the capsule and the knot you can repeat the steps as many times you want for stability of the repair here you can see all these sutures have stabilized the meniscus very well we confirm the stability of your repair through the range of movement of the knee joint using a probe post operatively i do not allow any weight bearing for 6 weeks passive range of movement up to 90 degrees is allowed for the first 2 weeks and later it is progressed as tolerated patella mobilization passive range of movement and quadriceps activation is given to the patient for the first 6 weeks once full weight bearing is started muscle strengthening exercises are given to the patient deep squatting or cross leg sitting is to be avoided until 4 months post op return to sports is not allowed before 6 months post operatively i thank you very much for your kind attention